Stephen, rugby takes a break for two weeks now. Um, next time we reconvene, the internationals will be with us for the Scarlets game, but just take a little bit of a look backwards and assess how you feel the last few weeks during this international period have gone. Yeah, I think obviously it's disappointment just coming with one point of the last two games. Um, I thought we put in a real performance in Munster, winning that game, backing it up with a short turn against Edinburgh. And then I think probably we've got to look at ourselves up in Connacht where we didn't get a couple of things right the early doors. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's a young group going out there and we weren't far away from getting five points or two points minimum, but obviously that didn't happen. And then going to Leinster, which was a real experience, Leinster team, they haven't lost the RDS and come away once again disappointed. I think there's definitely a pride in how brave some of the young boys were, like Adam Beard coming on at half time. We're, we're really patched up at the minute and boys, boys are digging in. Um, it's, it's a real good point, um, but ultimately disappointed that we didn't convert one or two chances to potentially take a victory away from the RDS. Do you think those last two games perhaps sum up the season in, in short? You know, two games where we've put ourselves in something to do, been behind and then shown incredible spirit and courage to put ourselves in touching distance. Yeah, I think that's what we've spoken about over the last couple of weeks is it's all well and good being brave and, and fighting back, but is, we need a little bit more smartness to what we do. But I think in round day when you look at some of the turnovers in the RDS where we, we've probably forced a few things, there's a, there's a hell of a lot of good in what we do, but it's about that emotional intelligence now in knowing when and when not to force the game. But ultimately, I think for a young group to learn, they've got to experience different things. And I think probably from where we were at the start, it's probably a mirrored image in around the five games at the start of the year where we only won one game and there was real and different performances, Connacht and, and Munster. But then it's more or less the same group, probably with a few more injuries along the way and some younger boys going to Munster and, and Leinster and Connacht. I think there's definitely an upturn in what we're trying to do and I think the future is really bright for us and around these young kids are experiencing going up against experienced teams, um, some top end teams away from home and we're not far away from taking two victories away from the top end of the table and that's with a hell of a lot of injuries and senior call-ups but it's something that it's not, not about bleating about it, I think it's about the excitement on what are the experiences, Adam Beard, Rory Thornton, Garth Thomas, Scott Orton, Owen Watkin, Marfus of this world have, have taken through these windows. What's the mood like within the changing room when you look at, we've got a Connaught where packed with overseas players, minimum disruption for the international squad, mm. Leinster, 10 players in the squad with 100 or more games for the province, so many of the current Irish squad have been released to play for them. Mm. When the boys sit back and reflect on those two games, how do they look at it? Is it, yet yeah, we've taken the next step forward or is it opportunities missed? I think it's disappointment. I think ultimately, I think it's the one. The good thing about the group is, even when team sheets come out, it doesn't make a difference who's on those team sheets. They believe in what they want to do, and they understand that, that there needs to be sort of more consistency in our performance. But there's definitely disappointment in both those changing sheds, and there's an excitement of what we can be. But ultimately, there's a lot of hard work to be done in between that and making sure we tidy up a few ends in our game and just bring that bit more consistency. Because I don't think we're too far away from having a real sort of top-end squad. As a young squad on Saturday, average age starting 15 was only 23. When they come back from these games now and you look at them in a detached way after the event and you see how far they've pushed, far more experienced, far more stronger team, does that make you think, hold on a minute, these boys could have something moving forward and does a penny drop amongst the squad perhaps? Yeah, I think so. I think it's definitely that thing of the squad, they, they're starting to grasp it because you look at these guys, they need to play rugby to go through it. It's not something you're going to come in, you're going to get a young 20 year old to come in and set the world alight but, and we get an, a big batch of them but it's something we can't be hiding behind the youth season on season. It's something we need to take the learnings and I think genuinely now we are getting some a lot of aspects of a squad where we probably the distance between the separation between our first choice to a third choice in some areas is pretty close and I think having that ability to move things around and it's definitely adding to competition and then we can move things around and rest up when we feel need to as opposed to potentially flogging certain individuals. It's something that I think is exciting for us going forward. But ultimately we don't want to be hiding behind youth for a period of time. It's something that we we're pretty excited with the talent we've got and ultimately we want to turn those narrow defeats into, into victories with or without our internationals and injuries. In the past, the likes of Roger Blythe, Andrew Ho, Andrew Millwood have spoken in depth about probably the biggest difference between the Ospreys now and the Ospreys of four or five years ago following all the financial changes. 
is that middle tier of players. We've kept all of the senior players we wanted. We've still got the young talent coming through. But always that middle tier, that experience has been taken out of the squad. Do you feel, you've touched on it there, that now we're in a position where, through the development from within, from growing these 19, 20, 21 year olds, you now start to develop that middle tier that can make us competitive all year round again? Yeah, and I think they're younger than they have been, but ultimately when you're learning at 19 as opposed to 21, 22, where through that window before the sort of four and a half years ago, we had a lot of experienced guys with 22, 23 year olds, whereas now we've got Ireland wins with 19 and sometimes 18 year olds. So it's something we've got a lot of those 21, 22 year olds at the minute. But I think that's exciting and those that will be end up being like a 27, 20 year olds over the next next couple of seasons, I think. So enough of looking back, look forward. We've got five games left this season, starting with the Scarlet's home on Easter weekend. A big game any time. There's all the more riding on it now because we need to get this final period of the season off to a winning start. Mm. If we can have any hopes of finishing that top six. Yeah, no, I think we understand. And obviously, it's, like you say, looking forward, not looking back. And at this point, the last two games, but ultimately, we've got to win our games. We've got to win our last five. And I think we know how difficult it's going to start off against the Scarlet's, but we want to build on what we have done and definitely want more consistency in our performance and I think some of the young boys have really stepped up the plate and it's amalgamating now the national boys coming back and making sure we finish off this season on, on a real high. With some of, the, some of the performances of the last few weeks, that first team selection when the Wales boys come back from the Six Nations could be a difficult one. Yeah, I think it will, it will like, I don't suppose it's difficult, it's something that it's going to be a real selection dilemma and I think it's really positive in the fact of this, I think, Boys are growing all the time, so we've got that more se selection headaches, which is something you, you crave as a coach. You want disappointed players and the fact they're not playing. I think it's we get to that point in, in certain positions and I think you can see them growing and that's only going to be a positive for our internationals and, and our younger kids for, because these competitions are long. We've had a real crack of Europe in the fact that I know it ended in disappointment, but some of these young boys going through Europe winning a three home games taking four points on the road is, is a huge step in the right direction for us but to compete on all fronts we need squad depth and I think we're starting to build that and it's making sure we can keep hold of these boys for the future. And the final message really for these last five rounds of the Pro 12 this season is for the supporters to come on that journey with us because we really believe we can do it. Yeah definitely and I think the sport has been fantastic all year round whether we're home or away it's, it's always a great place to be at home. We haven't got to travel very far over the next five games. We've got three home and two in Wales, so I got no doubt those supporters will come out and really back the boys. And it's something that the boys do. It does inspire them to to be better. And ultimately, we want to finish the season on a high for the supporters and for the players alike. Yeah.